Yeah, for sure. And uh, so let's let's jump right in, uh, Brian. Let's talk about some matchups to keep an eye on. Um, I'm going to be at the game, so there's going to be some some things that I'm going to be looking for. There's going to be some things that you're going to be looking for. Let's start on Notre Dame's offensive side. So when Notre Dame's offense is on the field against this Wisconsin defense, you and I both said in the stacking up show, you know, earlier this week, this is the matchup that's going to decide the game. Um, it's going to be the, the the Wisconsin defense versus the Notre Dame offense. What happens here? What matchups are you looking forward to? Mine are more general than I think specific, just because. You know, I mean, I'll let you go first, and then I'll kind of chime in. But I'm sure that you and I are going to be very similar in what we're looking for. Probably helps if I don't mute myself when I'm trying to talk. <laughs> My first key, Vince, is the right side of the Notre Dame offensive line against the Wisconsin defense and, and really whoever they're going to face. Because w- the way that Wisconsin plays, sometimes they're going to be going against the nose, Keanu Benton. Sometimes they're going to be going against Isaiah Mullins and and Matt Henningsen, the defensive end. Sometimes it's going to be Nate Herbig coming off the edge uh, as a field blitzer. Sometimes it's going to be Jack Sanborn or Leo Chanel crashing through uh, you know, you know, on on run stunts, that's what a three four defense does, right? And this is what we've talked about with Notre Dame. When you go right. to three downs, it's designed towards allowing you to kind of bring some pressure from different areas. Plus, Wisconsin's smart coaches they see that Notre Dame has had like almost no ability to pick up any kind of line game at all. I mean, even the most simple stunts, slant, you know, over the top stunts of like you know makes it seem like they're playing the eighty five Bears the way that Notre Dame has failed to right. pick those things up. So they're going to bring those. I, I think that these two veterans have to set the tone for this offensive line. They have to play better than they did last week. Josh Lug had, I thought, two solid first two games, struggle last week. Kane Madden Absolutely. has really struggled in all three games. They need these two veterans to be on top of their game. They need them to be physical at the point of attack. They need them to be smart and pick up those line games and twists, and they need them to play sound physical football. Drive your feet through contact, come off the ball. So that's the matchup I'm going to watch. If Notre Dame was prepared the way that they need to be prepared, we're going to see it first and foremost by the play of these two linemen. The veterans are going to pick up and receive and carry out that game plan, that preparation more than anyone else. So if these two kids come out, Lug and and uh, and Caden Madden come out, and two they're veterans, play- by the way, right? I mean, and if, they're, if they're playing, if they're playing hard, they're playing physical, they're picking up those Wisconsin line games and getting a push. Then I'm going to feel like, okay, this team is ready to go. So that's the first matchup that I'm going to be looking at in this game. No, that's fair. I and I, I had, I, I, it was very basic for me. I just had O line versus front seven, and I know that that's really vague. I really, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. <laughs> But the O-line's been bad. Like, yeah. I need all five of those guys to step up their game. And I realize Patterson has been good, right? Tosh got better as the game went on. Okay. But, man, I just – I need all five of them to step up. And, I again, I know that's vague, but that's the problem right now offensively. Well, I mean, I, I don't think it's vague. I think it's – you know, I mean, it says it right there. I mean, it's it's what everyone's thinking. Yeah. The reason I went with these two is because it's more looking at it from a tone setting standpoint, but number one, number one, but number two, and just as important in my opinion, is the fact that you have to have a side of the ball that can establish itself. So if you get into third and one, or you get into a, a must run situation, you got to be able to say, hey, look, okay, let's run behind Caden Josh. We, we can get this third sure. and one behind Caden sure. Josh. That should be a strength yeah. of this offensive line. Right, I, I right. agree. So you look at it and say, well, look, okay, yeah, maybe Tosh is having some issues here. Well, if it's just Tosh struggling or if the left side of the line is struggling, there's things you can do. You can slide your protection that way. Uh, You can boot away from that side. You can boot to that side, depending on the struggles they're having. You can put your backs to that side. You can have Jarrett Patterson help to that side. There's things you can do, Vince, as you know, if it's like one or two, you know, young guys that are struggling. But if it's your young guys are having a tough time and your fifth and sixth year seniors are having a tough time, then you're just not going to have success on offense. You know, at least it's your, your, or you're just going to have to do what you did last week, which is, yeah, you're not going to do anything for 90% of your plays. You just better hope that on your other 10%, you can rip off 20 plus yard gains and get the chunk plays. So that's why I went with these two specific guys because they have to have a side that establishes itself. And if you're, you know, your preseason All American guard that everybody right. told, you know, told us was so great, and your fifth year senior right tackle can't be that guy with Jarrett Patterson right inside of them. Sure, sure. You know, I mean, 
what what hope is there that this offensive line is going to get turned around? If if your veterans can't get rolling by the fourth game, then then you have to start asking yourself: Is this just who they? Is this just who they are? I, I'm about there though. Like I'm about to the point where this is who they are. Almost like this well, game is going to be. This game is going to be yeah. about yeah, Vince. I mean, you're absolutely right. This if if you just get your butt whooped again this game, then it's just kind of like okay. This is who you are. It's going to be like right. 2019, where you're just going to play bad until you start, until the competition is so bad that it just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, right. But that's unfortunately that's not going to be the case for the next few weeks. So. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, my my other one uh, for me is going to be Braden Lindsey and Kevin Austin versus the corners uh, for Wisconsin because mm-hmm. look, they had bad games last game, and nobody yeah. can deny that. We're not denying that. We said it right I from the doubt right from the they jump. would deny that right exactly they both need confidence they both need to this play their game they, they don't even need to have an amazing game they just need to play their game and i think this offense has a chance to score a bunch of points i, I just i i see wisconsin devoting a lot of their energy to trying to make the offensive line for notre dame look poor uh, and play poor and get into the backfield and hurry Jack Cohn and you know all of that. And I think there's going to be opportunities on the outside for the receivers to make plays. It's the, the big question is, number one, will they make those plays when the opportunity presents itself? And number two, is the ball going to be able to get to them in the right timing because of the offensive line? So, I mean, it all stems back to the offensive line. But Kevin Austin and Braden Lindsey had opportunities against Purdue. I actually like you know, the matchup of Notre Dame versus the Wisconsin secondary better than I liked the matchup between Notre Dame and the Purdue secondary. And they were running loose a lot of the game on last Saturday. So I see that happening again, but can they make the plays when the time comes? That's the big question for me. Uh, You know, can Joe Wilkins make that play across the middle? Yeah. Was it a high pass? It was. I think you still got to catch that. Right. So, I mean, they need to make plays when plays need to be made. That's what I need to see. And I, if they, if they make half the plays that they missed against Purdue, that's a blowout, and we're having a different conversation. That I don't need them to be superstars. I just need them to make plays when they're open. So that's going to be a big matchup for me: is w- these wide receivers versus the secondary for Wisconsin. I I wrote about this Vince in a. Um, um, an article that I did, kind of the first time I'd done it, wanted to just kind of see how it how it played, but it's it's called a time to shine, right? And it's four guys on offense. I put five on defense that have to play well in this game. And Kevin Austin was at the very top of my list. And and it's twofold. It's a lot of what you said. It's about this matchup, particularly, right? You're going to need a big plays in this game. And you know, Wisconsin is going to. There's going to be times you're going to be matched up one on one. If if your if your line can protect, Braden Lindsay has chances for big plays. Kevin Austin does all that kind of stuff. I think it's even even more at stake than just this game. I think the way that Kevin Austin played last week, you have to and Braden Lindsay, you have to force feed them the ball early. In my opinion, to get their confidence back, Absolutely. you need to find out right now: are they bounce back from this? Or are they kind of still in their heads about it? And if they're still in their heads about it, you need to know in the first two series and then you can figure something else out, right? As opposed to, you know, maybe going a couple quarters, three quarters and still trying to figure it out. They are so important to this victory for those big chunk plays because you're going to need big chunk plays. You need you're chunk not, plays, absolutely. You're not going to – I don't care. Look, if the offensive line comes out and balls out, you're not going eight, nine plays every series against Wisconsin. They're right. they're they're too good of a defense. You need now you're gonna have some series like that, right? And that's a key. You know, part of it's playing field position. Even if you just get a couple first downs and you're and putting you're the ball and you're exactly yeah. you know, you're not gonna score sixty on Wisconsin, right? If if everything clicks, their name's not gonna win fifty two to nothing. You know, it, it this isn't gonna be like the Big Ten championship game in twenty fourteen, right? Uh what was it fifty nine to nothing? Ohio State beat them. That's not who this defense is. Right. But you can still score 30 plus, right? But also, it's about making, like you said, Vince, playing that field position battle as well. So, in, in, if you're just going three and out and four and out and things like that, then you're going to lose that field position battle and, and you're going to put your defense in a bad spot. So, uh, that's obviously where the O line comes into play. But when it comes down to scoring the points that you need to score to win this game in a manner, we'll just win this game, period, you're going to need chunk plays. I think that Chris Tyree and Michael and Kyron Williams can give that, and the Gabriel Davis can give that, but they need an outside presence, and that outside presence is 
Kevin Austin and Braden Lindsay. Right. So I, I, I agree with your your point on that, but I also think there's more at stake for those two than just this particular game. I think there's another matchup too, Vince, that I want to address before we kind of get onto that. And that is, to me, I'm really looking, and, and we actually had some people on our message board talk about this. I want to see how Tommy Reese is able to get his running backs matched up against Jim, Jim Leonard's linebackers. And so my matchup is more of a Tommy Reese versus Jim Leonard matchup. I like Not, that. And it's okay. You know what? Jim Leonard's one of the best defensive minds in the game. What can Tommy Reese do to A, protect his offensive line? and B, use his best players against what is a big physical but not incredibly athletic group of linebackers. If he can figure out ways to get th those matchups, those isolations, which he's done a pretty decent job with in the first few games, this is one of those games where all of a sudden you've got Jack Sanborn trying to run down the seam with Kyron Williams or Chris Tyree or, you know, or, or on a wheel route with one of those guys. That's a matchup that I want to see. And, and that's where you can create some big plays. So part of the big plays this today, tomorrow, Saturday, Vince, is going to be, you know, Kevin Austin playing well. The other part of that is can Tommy Reese pick and can he find those moments where, hey, I know in this situation, on this down and distance, in this formation, we can get them in this defense and we can take a shot. We can do this. Yeah, right. And that's part of that's part of being a great play caller. Yeah. And can he do that? And I thought like the fourth and three, we we broke this down. It was one of our, our on our premium message board. It was a video that was only for premium members, but we broke down how crucial that fourth and three play was from a timing standpoint, a design standpoint, and just everything about that play was money. Can he have those instances where he was able to get his one of his best players in space against a linebacker? How is he going to be able to do that against Wisconsin? And those are that to me is going to be a big key to this game as well. Okay. Let's talk about some defensive matchups that we're looking at, Brian. Uh, this is, while I don't know that this is going to decide the game per se, this side of the ball, just like we said in our stacking up feature, uh, but this is still going to be a very interesting side of things. I think for Notre Dame, if the defense plays really, really well, then – they could potentially win the game. I, mm -hmm. I, I just – a lot of my prediction, a lot of my keys, it's all predicated on the defense because I have a lot of faith in the defense. So uh, from a matchup standpoint, I'll lead off. My first matchup that I'm going to be looking at uh, is Kyle Hamilton versus Jake Ferguson, the tight end. Um, I, I think that if Wisconsin is going to get their pass game going, it's going to go through their tight end. And I – feel very good about Kyle Hamilton if that is his responsibility is taking away the seam taking away their big man up the middle I like Notre Dame's chances I really do I mean of course Kyle Hamilton versus anybody I like Notre Dame's chances uh but if they can't get him going I don't think they can get their pass game going and if you can make Wisconsin one-dimensional yes that one dimension is very very it is good I won't say very very it's good it's who they are but any team that's one dimensional is a you'd rather be the defense going up against that. So uh, that's my first matchup to try to limit their pass game because I think it all kind of starts with Ferguson. I think this is a trench game, Vince. For me, uh, Notre Dame's got to be able to either win or hold their own in the trenches. If they can just hold their own against Wisconsin on both lines, they'll win the game because they have better athletes. And so that's why I'm going to continue going with the trenches here for me. Uh, my biggest key, first and foremost, is Jason Adamiola against the guards. I, I think that, you know, the first thing you say, well, you know, he's 280 pounds. Is he going to be able to hold up inside? And and that's a very legitimate question. But I, I remember watching him against the 365-pound guard at Alabama and just using his technique and using his quickness to just beat Deontay Speed. Brown like yeah. a drum. He did the same thing to Mio Echior, who are two big guards. And and Wisconsin's got two big guards and two physical guards. They're you know three hundred four, three ten, but they're big. I mean they're big, thick country boys. Jason Adamiola has to be on his game because one of the keys to to slowing down this Wisconsin team. Look, they run off tackle and counters and all that stuff. But when you watch this particular version of Wisconsin, they are at their best when they're just running right at you. Because they're not a super athletic line, they're 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 it's just this isn't a vintage Wisconsin line with multiple future first, second, and third round picks. This is a this has got a couple of those kind of guys maybe, but this is more of a of a of a try hard line. Sure, a big strong try hard kid. I, I take that right now. 
Yeah, no, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. I mean, if you get put this line yeah. with Notre Dame, they'd be killing it because Notre Dame yes. has the skill. Um, Correct. But but the point being is is in this matchup, if Jason had, the, the way to slow them down is to just dump is to beat them up the middle, and and we talked about it yesterday, force them to make early cuts and all those type of things. Jason Adamiola to me is a key to that. He's got to be disruptive. He's got to be getting off blocks. He's got to be forcing early cuts and and forcing either spills or cutbacks sooner than they want to. I, I feel like if he can play his game, number one, it's going to have a big a big impact on this game. Number two, there's going to be a lot of NFL scouts watching him in this game more than any other because they want to see how he goes up against these big physical linemen. Because he'll so, always be considered undersized. And if correct. he can show that it doesn't matter, this is a perfect game to do that. Mm-hmm. Yes, agree. So that's my that's my number one matchup on defense. I'm I'm gonna piggyback off that a little bit. Um, I think that this is gonna this is a huge game for the linebackers for Notre Dame because I do have a lot of faith in the front four. If they can do their job and allow those linebackers to scrape and be aggressive, look, JD Bertrand has done that all season. Uh, White has done that seventy percent of the season. But he needs to do that for 100% of this game, right? But, the, you know, this could be a game where Bo Bauer has a good game. This could be a, a game where, you know, Kaiser and Pryor uh, have good games. I think the linebackers are going to be put in a position to make plays, but they need to make them. They need to read and react quickly, and they need, they need to meet the running back at the line of scrimmage, not three, four yards down the field, right? And, I, I mean, I have faith that they can do that. but And we've seen it in, in bits and pieces – from all of those guys, uh, but we need to see it from all of them at the same time in the same game for the entire game. Uh, so I, I think a lot of this, a lot of the run game for Wisconsin is going to hinge on the linebacker play. So, uh, you know, I, that's going to be a really important matchup to keep an eye on. Yeah, I I, I have linebackers in, in sort of my, I have the defensive article about players have to step up. I have Drew White in there. I, I don't I don't view it as much as a matchup. It's just they okay. have to play well. That's fair. Uh, just me. I, but I, I get, I don't disagree with anything you just said uh, in regards to the importance of the linebackers. The other matchup for me that's important is Cam Hart against Kendrick Pryor and Danny Davis. One of the keys to success in this game is being able to lock down their outside receivers and – allow you to then insert more bodies into the box. If you're not having success with your corner, shutting these guys down, especially Cam Hart, and especially if he's to the field again, and I don't know if that was just a Purdue thing or if that's you know a permanent move, um, but either way, he's a guy that has to be at his best. He's been pretty good so far, a little up and down, but you expect that from a guy that's you know made his first, second, and third career starts. But he's been pretty disruptive, has three breakups already. You know, he's been really good against the run, too. And that's another area where I think really good. He could have some successes if he can be as, you know, come up, fly up, you know, make some hits. But if you can lock down, and you could throw Clarence Lewis into this conversation as well, just as easily as Cam Hart, if they can lock down those corners or those receivers and uh, force the ball kind of back inside in the pass game and limit early down pass attempts, you know, because. Wisconsin is not going to just only throw on third down. They're going to try to take some first and 10 shots down the field. If you can force incompletions on those, you're going to have some success because the biggest, one of the big keys is, and I'm going to have this in one of, you know, in my keys to the game is, you know, early down success is going to be key. Well, one way to do that is when they drop back to throw the ball on first down, don't give them anywhere to go. And I think Cam Hart and Clarence Lewis are going to be, play a big role in that in their matchup against Danny Davis and Kendrick Pryor. Well, I mentioned in I, the first two bells I got, I had it on mute and I missed that last one. Uh, I think that, you know, I mentioned in, in our stacking up that if I'm the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, I'm putting, uh, I'm putting my corners on an island a little bit this week. And I think this is going to be an opportunity for them to show who they are, whether that's good or bad. I think we're going to get a really good idea of where kind of Clarence Lewis and where Cam Hart are at this point in their development. And, you know, they could take a big step in this game. They, they really could. And I, it's one of my keys on defense, actually, uh, is the corners. And we'll, we'll, I'll expound on that a little bit. But this is a great opportunity for them because I think they're, a lot of the game plan is going to be on their shoulders. Because if they – look, Notre Dame can do a great job with the front seven and they can be disrupting things all they want. But if the corners can't do what they need to do and they can't shut down those receivers, it's not going to matter. Because if they're starting to complete stuff downfield, 
well, now the front seven can't be as aggressive, and then you're not in your game plan anymore defensively. So um, I, I think this is a big opportunity for them.